Hello, hi, I'm back. Uh, we are still uh, on the topic of this book, Soul of Money. Can you see? Okay, now uh, I'm in the chapter 4, which is a sufficiency, the surprising of truth. Okay, I skip all the stories of this book and then just uh, go straight to the uh, most important. I read it to you. We each have the choice in any setting to step back and let go of the mindset of scarcity. Once we let go of scarcity, we discover the surprising truth of sufficiency. By sufficiency, I don't mean a quantity of anything. Sufficiency isn't two steps up from poverty or one step short of abundance. It isn't a measure of barely enough or more than enough. Sufficiency isn't an amount at all. It is an experience, a context we generate, a declaration, a knowing that there is enough and that we are enough. Sufficiency resides inside of each of us and we can call it for word. It is a consciousness, an attention, an intentional choosing of the way we think about our circumstances. In our relationship with money, it is using money in a way that express our integrity using it in a way that expresses value rather than determine, determines value. Sufficiency is not a message about simplicity or about cutting back and lowering expectations. Sufficiency doesn't mean we shouldn't strive or aspire. Sufficiency is an act of generating, distinguishing, making known to ourselves the power and presence of our existing resources and our inner resources. Sufficiency is a context we bring forth from within that reminds us that if we look around us and within ourselves, we will find what we need. There is always enough. When we live in the context of sufficiency, we find a natural freedom and integrity. We engage in life from a sense of our own wholeness rather than a desperate longing to be complete. We feel naturally called to share the resources that flow through our lives, our time, our money, our wisdom, our energy, at whatever level those resources flow. To serve our highest commitments in the context of sufficiency, and the flow of resources to and through and from us, our soul and money, interests merge to create rich, satisfying and meaningful life. Sufficiency is the truth. Sufficiency can be a place to stand a context that generates a completely new relationship with life, with money and with everything that money can buy. I suggest there is enough in nature in human nature and in the relationships we share with one another to have a prosperous, fulfilling life no matter who you are or where you are in the spectrum of resources. I suggest that if you are willing to let go, let go of the chase to acquire or accumulate always more and let go of that way of perceiving the world, then you can take all the energy and attention and invest in what you have. When you do that, you will find unimagined treasures and wealth of surprising and even stunning depth of diversity. Living from sufficiency, thinking from there and generating that frame of reference for life is enormously powerful and important for our time. In our relationship with money, we can continue to earn, save, invest and provide for ourselves and for our families but we reframe the relationship with a new recognition of and appreciation of what we already have in that new way of seeing the flow of resources in our lives rather than being something that is constantly escaping our caps of de diminishing instead of becoming a 
flood of nourishment is something we have the privilege of being trusty for trusty of for the moment. Our relationship with money ceases to be an expression of fear and becomes an expression of exciting possibility. The context of sufficiency can transform our relationship with money, with our resources, and with life itself. Okay, so this uh, <clears throat> chapter, I find it is very, very meaningful for, for me, maybe and for you, and for all of us, because sufficiency is the opposite of scarcity. So we, we see money in an exciting way, in a very a joyful way, instead of that fear because most of us uh, have relationship with money uh, with fear because fear of uh, not enough fear of letting go of money and fear of like people still our wealth or our money in this uh, chapter sufficiency is actually suggesting suggesting otherwise so the way we perceive money we have this faith that uh, the universe is is there it's abundance and the universe want you to uh, enjoy what you have instead of chasing for the next one the next one and the next one and you have no time to enjoy and the moment you enjoy and grateful the words is grateful the, for, the grateful for what you have the universe will give you flow more of opportunities and resources that you need to generate money I'm not saying that uh, you don't you don't need to think of money, but you can think of money in a way that is very 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 joyful way. And how uh, for me how I uh, you know uh, switch my mindset of my relationship my relationship with money is how many more mouth can I feed? You know that when I have a lot of money, how many more can I feed? How many more can I give them? You know in terms of like food, educations, or shelters. Yeah, so uh, this is the the part where I, I'm not lying because sometimes when we want to donate, right, for every 10% of revenues in, in, in my life or in maybe in your life too, you want to donate and you have this fear of like, uh, yeah, it's, well, it's a lot of money, 10%, it's a lot of money, it's our effort, you know, it's our blood and sweat. Yeah, in that kind of mindset, of a uh, frame of mindset of money uh, this uh, consider scars but if if we have this uh, su sufficiency of mindset we will say that that 10% of money doesn't belong to me it belongs to the universe the universe want me to give through my hands to my efforts through my resources so uh, that is uh, the way uh, we can switch off, you know, like giving away 10% of your resources. You start, we can start with 10% first, or maybe, uh, you know, then after that, trust me, if, if you, you know, if you practice this uh, law of attraction of giving away 10% with gratefulness, with uh, abundance, that, 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 that money belongs to the people that you're going to help. You, God just using you as a middle or a vase to, like, you know, pass the money to them because God cannot use the hand and pass to them the money so God use you to pass them the money so if you think that way in that kind of a frame mindset then you are in the right uh, way of a mindset of uh, getting uh, more peace more uh, fulfilling in your life instead of like uh, not enough uh, be being chasing of something that is after for example after you have a one, uh, one room house you want second uh, two room house after the third one, you want three room house and then four room house. There is never enough. You will never fulfill because you keep chasing the next one. You know, uh, so that is uh, that is the opposite of uh, sufficiency. Sufficiency basically means that you enjoy of what you have, and you have this uh, ability to, you know, like give away some of your revenues to the people that you want to give. Okay. So yeah, that is basically about this, my sharing about the sufficiency. And yeah, see you the next time.